everyone. Here with Clara Alberniz of List Perfectly today. We're talking about sustainability and fashion and how you can actually make money with the craziest things in your house, from your toilet paper rolls to your old laptops to clothes with holes in them <laughs> to so much more. Right, Clara? That's right. And here I am to show you the many different ways you can do so. And it's not about making the money. That's just the positive for you. But the other positive is there are people in other countries who need your broken remote control to help them. So listen in, you're gonna be so inspired after this. I'm here with Lindsay McCormick, CEO and founder of Bite. And we are talking all about the beauty industry's contribution to um, the ailing earth, should we say? <laughs> Yeah, the stats can be seem very scary, but every little thing that we do adds up. You guys are going to die when you hear how many Empire State Buildings a year come from one little teeny thing we do every day. Oh my, don't forget to hit subscribe. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Our quote of the day, the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. Ooh, That is from Robert Swan. And it is Earth Day, friends. So today, Kelsey has programmed an entire show for us. <laughs> right, Queen? That's right. It's tell us, tell Earth everybody what you figured out, what you what you put together. This is all Kelsey. You everyone. guys. So if you hate it, call her. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> I'm just like, you know what? Growing up in Seattle, we were very like inundated with, Seattle is a very big earth place, right? Mm -hmm. We're all big on recycling and everything. And sometimes I think it's so overwhelming that then you just don't do anything because you don't know what to do. And so I wanted to get some people on for our beloved Earth Day to kind of talk to us about sustainability and just like little steps and little tweaks and little things mm -hmm. we can do in our daily routine that make a massive impact. So while I was researching, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. There's like just, it's crazy yeah. how much we pollute and like how fast it's happening. So anyways, that's that was kind of my thought on our Earth Day episode. I like it. I like it, Queen. I like little things that we can do to make it better. It is sound, it does sound so overwhelming. I think that's yeah. why some people quit. I have to admit I get really confused. I don't know if you guys do, I do too. when I see the barrels. I do too. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I thought it was just me. Nope. I have to I don't know what to do and then I'm ashamed yeah. of myself so I just throw it really fast and whatever I think it is and then I run. <laughs> then you run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. I I grew Luckily up <laughs> I don't frequent anywhere very much cuz I'm always at home, but I would always ask Erica. I'd always ask my sister cuz she's like the biggest. But then why don't they make it clear? If three bright young ladies can't figure this shit I know, out. I know. Why I know. why when they make it simpler? Like show me the pictures of things like all plastic things. Anything plastic here? Anything paper here? Right. But it's not l listed like that. It's not. And then I also, and I don't know if this is a right, correct You're stat. not just agreeing with me, right? You guys really no, don't. No, 100%. Oh, I really don't no, know. I get very no, confused. I would honestly, Erica would yell at me always growing up because I never knew. And yeah, you go to the mall, you buy yeah. something, and then you don't know where to put it. But then what I think happens too, and this is where I, why I get so like, I'm like, I want to do it correctly. If you put one in the wrong thing, then I'm pretty sure it kind of like ruins the whole oh, batch. Oh, yes. Like... Yes. So, so then I just started stressful. leaving it on the table and giving a big tip. <laughs> That's funny. <I laughs> that like made that. me feel better. I was like, okay, they get the tip. Yeah. You're safe to clean up my mess, but I'm like, I don't want to do it wrong. Yeah. It's, it really is confusing. Yeah. I know. So, okay. So Queenie put together this episode, friends, and I think that anytime we can do our part um, and, and try to make things less overwhelming and less confusing, it's good mm -hmm. for all of us, right? Because... Yeah. We, it's like, you don't, what are they, it's like a saying from the old days, like you don't poop where you live or whatever. I'm using a less crass word. <laughs> oh. It's something like that. Sure. So it's like, we all live here. Let's like, <laughs> yeah. let's give a damn. Yeah. There was Honestly. like a little like bird that used to be like, oh, an owl. And it was like, give a hoot, don't pollute. And <gasps> I did like a whole paper on pollution when I was younger. I love I that. still have it. And it's like, people just don't care about trash. And like, I wrote this whole thing <laughs> about how you should care about trash oh and gosh. you should be good to the, to the world. That was back before it was cool to be eco. That I was the like intro that. to being, because here's the thing. School is what influences us, right? Mm -hmm. They teach you things and you want to go home and look smart to your parents. So you're like, guess what? You got to give a hoot, mom. And they're like, oh. <laughs> In Greek. <laughs> Your mom's like, what? Give hoot. Give hoot. That's hilarious. 
<laughs> give hoot, give what? So <laughs> we got to give a hoot, people. We do. Uh, so yes. Yeah, so in front, uh, in honor of Earth Day, we're going to be celebrating with two women who are blazing the sustainability trail with their brands. It's less about the brands, people. It's more about just the sustainable tips. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're really excited to to bring them to you. So heating the pool was not eco friendly. Is that eco friendly or not? I don't know. I really don't. Well, I heated the pool last weekend for my best friend and I to have a little vacation. <laughs> I think heating the pool. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know I'm not excited to see the bill. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. It's not like you're adding carbon to the air by doing that. Yeah. I don't know. Who, who knows? But Queens, let me just tell you before we get into this whole tell Earth us. Day, I am, what, three days away. It's Holy Week for us Greek Orthodox, by the way. Mm-hmm. So Kalianas, let's see for anybody Greek who's listening, because <laughs> um, Easter is the Sunday. But I leave Sunday. I might be able to do some Greek Easter festivities and then drive oh, nice. down to San Diego. But I leave Sunday, and I'm going to my meditation event. Don't worry. We have programming for you. Yes. We have worked hard to make sure you got it all. Um, we get some great episodes next week. But I will be healing myself, mind, body, and soul. I'm so excited for you. Anything ailing me. And I'm going to tell you, it is amazing. I feel like I could lift a car with a smile on my face. I am in like the highest vibration I think I've ever been in. Wow. And my eyes feel wide open. I look in the mirror and I like what I see. I told you this the Mm -hmm. other day. It's strange. Like, listen, you get older, you start to notice all the things that are like getting older or... Whatever. But when you're in a low vibration, you see and feel all the shit. Mm -hmm. When you're in a high vibration, you're like, everything looks good. Everything feels good. I feel great. I love that. It's insane. And all it is is some meditating, guys. So if you haven't already considered doing this, I'm going to get us an affiliate link. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's just so amazing. Everybody should be doing this. Um, But... I feel like on top of the world and I'm, I'm changing so rapidly. Like I said, even just this weekend, I was just telling Alyssa, I'm like, I didn't like playing cards. We'd play two hands. We would play for hours. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I'm not interested anymore. It's so wild. 90 day fiance. <laughs> not into it. I only watched 45 minutes of the two hour special. Wow. Wow. Don't tell anybody because I'm still a little embarrassed. Yeah, very unlike you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, but things are changing and yeah. I'm like, I just want to be meditating. I want to be not here. I want to be there. Mm. It's the coolest feeling in the world. That's awesome. I'm yeah. just excited for you to go like and be around all these people. Like just be fully immersed yes. with everyone who feels the same way as you. You know, I think that's going to be really, really cool. I think we need to do an episode. Remind me to bring the microphones. Show me how to use them. Oh, Marie and I, Marie totally. Forleo, author of Everything is Figure Outable, New York Times bestselling author, the um, creator of B-School. So if you want to start a business, you should be taking her class. Um, But she and I are doing it together. We should do an episode downloading it right after. Mm -hmm. I'm making a note right now. Because that is going to be crazy. I I had said we would do one in the car ride home because I'm driving home for two and a half hours, (laughs) which we will because that'll be a whole different thing. But I think, and if it's not then, because she might be leaving right after the event, Mm-hmm. We'll have her on the show and we'll talk about it. But it's mind blowing what's yeah, I'm happening excited for you. So I'm excited for you to try this, Queen. Me too. I need to use some of my other courses I've purchased. Kelsey, but <laughs> I don't know how, how I have time to do any. I'm like Kelsey. You need to make the time, but that's yeah. I have like Dr. Nicole's. I still have to do. I have Mark Groves that he gave me. I'm like man, but. Go yeah. on your screensaver right now. Let's see what your Instagram, Twitter, and whatever okay. screen I've time is. Pretty good. How do you even find that? You go into your general. Friends, let's all do this for a second. Ready? Screen. So screen time. You go into your settings. You go down to screen time, and it will tell you your activity. I was checking mine, and I was in like the 12 minutes a day for Instagram, uh, eight minutes maybe for screen Twitter. Screen time. Here we go. Today has been one minute, but it's only 1020. So you scroll down, it'll say see more. See all activity. There you go. Well, it's only giving me for today. No, go to yesterday. Oh, okay. And the day before. Drum roll, please. 40 minutes. Yesterday. On Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was your day off. 
I've been pretty good. I don't really have... But 40 minutes, remember what yeah. Brendan Burchard said. One hour a day of distraction equals mm-hmm. 45 eight-hour work days. Yeah. Don't tell me you don't have time, queen. No, truly. To do some meditation. No, no, no. I just need to... I need to find, like, redo my schedule so I have the time. I know I have it. Yeah. It's just, like, making it happen, you know? Yeah. 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 It's just overcoming yourself. hmm to just say, I'm doing this. This is a priority. Right. Just like you wake up and you overcome yourself and you say, I'm putting makeup on, bitch. <laughs> I'm right. Getting, I'm getting up. You're putting on makeup. Yeah. Or you're putting clothes on. Yeah. It's the same thing. You mm-hmm. got to overcome yourself. And you will feel so much better on the other side. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk sustainability, friends. We're going to be right back with Clara. Clara Albernes of List Perfectly. So she has a secondhand mm-hmm. clothing store. Well, she has, or, it's a it's an app and it's actually really cool because I used to always sell my stuff on Poshmark or this or that. And what her app does is it takes all these things and- What's all these things? So mean? it's like Poshmark and Mercati and all these different secondhand places. It where aggregates you can, from everywhere. Exactly. So you list it once on their app and it psh, sends it everywhere. Ooh. I know. Damn. I know. Kind of cool. That's so, why it's called this perfectly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like and they kind of went viral overnight and I just think it's so cool. And now she was telling me and we'll ask her more about it, but now is the first time like ever in history where people are actually purchasing gifts um, secondhand more than like in the stores or something. And I think oh, that's so cool. Oh, wow. oh but, I like that. Yeah. Would you ever give a secondhand gift to me or Kelsey Pusha? <laughs> I mean, if it was cool, <laughs> then I would. Yeah. If it was cute, Well, why it's not? probably like us having to change the conversation around that so right. you don't feel badly about doing that. Right. Yeah. Right? So I like that. All right. Cool, right? We'll be right back, friends. Hey. Hi, Clara. Nice to meet you, Maria. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being <laughs> with us today. It's interesting. I was just uh, chatting with Kelsey and, you know, we were we were having a conversation amongst us about gifting people secondhand things, which is kind of like, I think going to be the next level of, Mm -hmm. of recycling and sustainability. But how do we get over the fact that we're used to having something shiny and brand new in packaging, (laughs) which even just saying it out loud, I'm like, Oh yeah, that's the bad part, I guess. Yeah. Great question, Maria. So what you want to do is the first time in American history, these holidays where the average consumer bought pre-owned, pre-loved. I like to say pre-loved. Pre-loved. I like that. Pre-loved. Okay. To give us a present to others. So what you're doing is you're supporting a small business. All right. Sometimes the pre-loved items can be upcycled. Okay. They can take parts of a clothing that was maybe vintage and then they put it together with something new and it's upcycled. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's stuff that they do, for example, mosaic. Okay. It's pre-love. Okay. So the plate was broken and then they put it together in a mosaic. Done. You're producing landfill. So it's how you present yeah, and how it's not about getting something dirty, a pair of shoes that are dirty and here, Merry Christmas. It's not about that. It has evolved so much more uh, than that. I'm so glad you gave that visual because that's kind of what it feels like. It's like, oh, right. here's this old thing. But, you know, we're in a time where fast fashion is so big. And I, it was funny, just over the weekend, this brand called Shine, which is supposedly Oh, just you're thinking like, Shein. Shein. Okay, Shein. Shein. I don't yes, know. Yes, I had yes. never heard of it. Oh, yeah. Never seen it. Oh, but it yeah. was trending this weekend or recently um, because it's exploding and, and it's, you know, so bad. it's so bad for the environment. But listen, we all shop at Zara and H&M. That's fast fashion too. So how do we, how do we feel about that? And, and how do we do better? But like, Obviously, we're shopping there because it's affordable. This yeah. is from H&M, and I love this yeah. shirt. But mine too. Mine's from H&M too. <laughs> yeah. Mine is too. Well, we just got to okay. be conscious that with all due respect, okay, that shirt, when it's new, any new pair of jeans, it takes 2,000 gallons of water to do, okay? 2,000 gallons. So wow. 
It's about maybe, you know, when we buy uh, new new items, we want to extend its life. And that's why you want to maybe re-give it to a friend or maybe to a reseller so they can resell it. So what you want to do is reduce the carbon footprint. OK, OK, perfect. We did bought it. But let's make sure that you don't end up, let's say, uh, tossing it on a trash OK, or going to a landfill. And then you, you would be surprised people need all clothing. For example, there's marketplaces like Etsy where they need all clothing so they can do their collection of upcycle. Mm. So if you were going to donate it to Etsy, how would you do that? You, you know, you can sell it. You can donate to Goodwill yes. or you can sell it yourself on Etsy. You can open your own store and then you can bundle corks. For example, there's only one tree that it grows in Portugal that makes a corks for you know, the real corks for wine. So bundle corks, bundle toilet paper rolls, such a great way to declutter in you're helping a community of artisans or craft people to get the uh, supplies, the parts. Yes. <clears throat> so they can create their art. Wow. You know, I think that's kind of tip number one, right? If you yeah. are not really, you know, let's say Earth Day conscious, but you're listening right now, yeah. don't throw any of your clothes away. Give them away, mm -hmm. sell them, donate them, which is what I do. Yep. I didn't realize I was being so sustainable, but good job, Maria. Um, I'm, I'm <laughs> grateful. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, give us if if there's any stats on fast fashion and how it's hurting the environment, because I always know that if we know better, we'll do better, right? Thank you, Maya Angelou. But uh, but some of us aren't really up to you know up up in our education in this area. Well, when it comes to fast fashion, what we got to understand, okay, is that the worst part of fast fashion, it is me coming from, I'm from Argentina, and we call that like the slavery uh, employments, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, okay? Mm -hmm. So what happens is you end up supporting, okay, um, slavery employment, because literally in our countries, our inflation and, and what whatnot is it's insane so we end up working for pennies literally and you never get out of debt you never get out of debt you're always 10 days behind so the cheap clothing that you're getting actually is costing a lot to third world countries that's why we have brands like patagonia like other brands like right now are making such a big effort to reduce uh their their, their footprint their carbon footprint and then and then they even have a part that they can upcycle different parts of uh clothing so that's just just saying something that with fast fashion um not only you are damaging okay or not coexisting cohesively with Mother Earth, but also you're supporting bad things like slavery job and other, th and literally, you know, people that are being slaves to, to, to that job. Yeah. Well, Clara, where would they work if they didn't have that job? That's usually what someone's argument would be. Well, if they didn't have that, how would they even make that? Thank you. If there won't be fast fashion, then the local economy could be growing. Mm -hmm. Then the locals can do that clothing. So you see how much is hurting, mm. especially the third world countries. Oh, and they're such beautiful countries. Wow. Um, so there are some crazy statistics. Like you said, 3,000 liters of water for one cotton shirt. I know you mentioned 2,000 gallons for the jeans, but yeah. 3,000 liters of water for one cotton shirt. It's, it's kind of unbelievable. Um, yeah. So your solution in your mind and what you're doing, you built this company to kind of aggregate all of the sellers so you can find it easier. Can you, can you explain that to everyone? Thank you. So my business was born out of my own desperate necessity because I was diagnosed with deformative arthritis very early. Mm. And uh, I sell online in places like eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, and, and Etsy. But uh, I couldn't grow my business because the pain was so much. And uh, at the same time, I was a vintage clothing reseller. When you sell vintage, I tell the story from where the item came. It's collectible stuff. So that's how I was doing very good at reducing landfills, not selling brands, right? Because anybody can sell brands, okay? Even the LL Bean, let's say 50 is collectible, right? But I was selling anything explaining the story and literally getting restoring this stuff, sending it to uh, to people to fix it, washing it and whatnot. So we created the platform. It literally was for me, vintage seller. 
but we never thought it could go <laughs> to such a wide audience. So what we do is my software is designed for you to tell the story and present with accuracy anything, any product. And you could be selling broken remotes, okay? They sell very well because all you have to say is how it stopped working, uh, wh why it stopped working, and what is working. So you're reducing landfills. You're not sending this trash to third world countries because third world countries buy these. This is the we. This is what we do to survive. Oh my god! We buy trash from the first world, or they donate us. Okay, the broken um, uh, uh, electronic devices. Okay, and then we do what we what we have. We do a melange of whatever, and then we try to fix it, and then we sell it locally. So by with my platform, what you're doing is you're helping other people here in USA, not. To, to fix stuff. At the same time, you're helping small businesses. You're helping maybe a mom or pop, okay, that they like to fix stuff and then they like to resell it. And wow. it's just so reduces landfills, not only with clothing, Maria, it could be with, I sell like all my old laptops because I, I do software. I use like three laptops a year. Imagine. So I have to do Mac and Windows and, 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 and you see it, you see behind me, I have to use all different <laughs> devices. Imagine if I am tossing, okay, to the trash every and that's just me, my team. Imagine my team. <laughs> We're 20 wow. people. Yeah. So imagine that. So what we do is we sell these laptops. We tell them what is not working. And you can sell them online on wow. marketplaces like eBay. Mercari, just say, say what is not working. Say what, if you got water damage, you say water damage. If it got, you know, shattered because it fell, it's because it fell. If it stopped working and you don't know, you say that. Wow. So you make money and someone else gets help that they need. What's amazing is we throw things out that are perfectly good yeah. because we don't know what to do with them. Truly. And we always think, I wish we could give this to somebody. I mean, we, you know, there are things, obviously you send a goodwill, but my point is in just in general yeah. terms, we think it's trash because it's broken yeah. and we get, we get rid of it. It's such a cool, and I never knew of a place that did this. So I'm yeah. really glad to know about, by the way, friends, List Perfectly is <laughs> Clara's company because I think that a lot of people who are listening to this, myself included, are going to be inspired to list things on there. My Same. husband is going to feel so much better. We have so much tech equipment, so much stuff. It piles up in the cabinets and yes. then we hope somebody will need it and we'll give it no. to them. But forget the that. Then there's the stuff that does break. Uh, what, how amazing is that? Yeah, Maria. And what about tr stuff that Goodwill wouldn't accept? For example, yeah. broken yeah. picture frames, broken plates, bundle your broken plates. It's needed for mosaic projects, okay? Bundle your broken wow. frame parts, okay? The people need it so they can do, you know, that those unique frames. Yeah. Anything that is broken, like, a, a, I don't know, like, um, gosh, your coffee mug, okay, <laughs> broke, okay, save it, you know, say, I'm not telling you just one little coffee mug, but save your broken coffee mugs. Then you get like a little bundle and you sell it. Isn't that amazing? I know Crazy. because we were going to put glass on our walls at one point because of all the robberies. I was like, oh, these will have their DNA. Um, <laughs> but I didn't want to do it because I didn't want the animals. I was like, oh, the little squirrels run on there and I don't want them to get hurt. But initially, the people who were talking to about doing this for our protection were like, yeah. oh, we'll have to buy so much glass. And I'm like, well, isn't there glass that like you could just use? Like, why would you buy new glass to break it? There you go. And so that makes a lot of sense, but I love this. What so a great cool. idea, but all great ideas are generally born from people who have a need and you had a need. So, um, that's incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Queen, I know you probably have a million questions for Carla. You know, I just want to know, Clara, sorry. no, you're good. <laughs> it's just Carla right here. So I said, <laughs> I'm like reading, I'm like, wait, that's not right. I Ron, Bur <laughs> I Ron Burgundy her, Ron Burgundy her. Claire, I want to know, you've listed a couple things now, but what are some other things around the house that would maybe surprise people that they would typically throw out and you're like, no. Clothing with holes in it or something? Yeah. I mean, even you talking about toilet paper rolls, like yeah. don't throw that. So if you have any other, you know of that sort of thing. I would love to hear. Yeah. And like, how much does it go for? Like a bag? <laughs> yeah. Let's, yeah, let's right? inspire people to think, oh, I can make some money off all my toilet paper rolls. Okay. Like a bag yeah. of 50 of them. How much will it get me? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, depends on, on the bundle, you know, and, and how you ship them. You want to make sure you put them on a box, you know, and, and, and everything. Also, okay. The uh, paper towels rolls, 
very highly required. But wow. talking about other things that we could have around the house, for example, me that I have deformative arthritis, I have to have this medicine that I have to do daily. So if you have prescription pills, bottles, okay, pull off the, the, the label, it's very easy. And then you bundle them and also sell them. <laughs> wow. Oh my, oh my God. How many did I have for my mom? So many. So many. Wow, I'm thinking about all my mom's eyeglasses. I'm like, what am I going to do with them? I donated them, but you could just bundle them and and yes. then the right people who need them. I guess if if people need them, they know to go to the secondhand stores technically, right? Yep. Etsy. Yeah. Etsy is your place. The main you can buy find it on places like Mercari too, and in uh, sometimes eBay. But Etsy is the place where you're gonna because you have not only the seller audience, but also the buying audience that understand they need that. The sellers are the buyers. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, any other simple ways that we can swap things in our lives um, in the world of fashion or homeware or whatever to make the world or planet better? Mm, like, for example, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan, you know, again, you know, if I live here in Arizona, please, okay, please get artificial grass on places right now. We're changing. This is, I know it's expensive, but water is going to be expensive, more expensive in the long run. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I highly recommend, especially for us living in the hot weather uh, areas. I still see a lot of grass and it just breaks my heart. I tried grass here and it was in the, the water bill was $3,000 a month. <gasps> I know. I know. What? I put fake grass in the back. Oh, my grass costs more than my mortgage. Uh, <laughs> yes. 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 But correct. here's the problem for me. I have 15 citrus trees in the front, mm. so they're going to need oh. water anyway. So it was one of those things where I talked with my gardener and I'm like, even if I put fake grass in the front, it's really not going to save anything. I have an orchard of citrus that yeah. need that need to be watered. Mm -hmm. So I put it in the back and yes, it hurts at first wow. financially. Yeah. It's like, it's expensive to put fake grass in. But you're right, over time, it's saving a lot in water. That was one of the reasons I was like, maybe we should move somewhere. This is crazy town. Wow. <laughs> Another thing, for example, having a new, and this goes for my community, the Latino community. We love doing dishes by hand and we don't like using dishwashers until I realized how much water I was spending by doing manually dishes. And really? Really? Yes, with an effective new dishwasher, you load it to max capacity. You're saving so many wow. gallons of water. The same goes with your washer and dryer. Yes, they're more expensive, but you're going to be, because they're smart, they're going to fill up up to the right, they have a sensor, so they fill up to the right capacity. So that I'm big, changed my life because I sold pre-loved stuff and I have to wash it. I have to do, for example, if you're reselling pre-loved clothing and it has an undesired scent, I always recommend, put it on, it's a bacteria. You put it on a bag in the freezer, let it there for 24 or 48 hours. No you put it in the sun with the UX and then you wash it. So then you don't have to wash the same garment three times and waste so much water. Wow. Oh my God. So many great tips. So many. So wait, okay. Any more that we need? Because yeah, right? damn, that was so good. Wait, Claire, so you said put it in the freezer for 24 hours and then the sun? Yes, that's right. Wow. Because the sun is the natural UX. And then wash. And then wash. And then wash. Dang. That's right. Wow. It's like a dry cleaner at home. Hey, right? <laughs> that's amazing. That's um, right. Clara, any last minute tips before we let you go? Because this has been very informative in such a short amount of time. I'm <laughs> I know, so excited. Right? <laughs> okay, I wanted to mention that we made an episode about sustainability in our seller community podcast, Maria. And we interviewed two of our most dear uh, resellers that they have found a way to be sustainable on their reselling businesses and be profitable and most important, very happy. And we are going to donate for every download of our seller community podcast earth day episode one dollar up to five thousand dollars and we're gonna donate it to fabric and you know what fabric is maria mm -mm. it's an incredible fashion incubator it's a business accelerator it's a design studio academy and manufacturer that's sustain sustainably disrupting redefining and reshoring the fashion industry for the modern apparel entrepreneur and we're so happy because also arizona has the first uh, university supporting sustainability amazing wow. well Clara, you're doing so much in this world um, to help people. And I 
I uh, am so grateful that we know about lists perfectly now. I'm going to tell my husband he's going to oh, feel so <laughs> yeah, good. He is. He uh, is. Knowing that <laughs> all of these wires and cords and old laptops, we have so much stuff. Mm-hmm. It's coming out of our ears. And not only that, like we get so much stuff sent to us um, from, you know, product companies to try things or whatever. So oh. I've been doing a program with our our top tier Patreon members where I'm sending them gifts in the mail because oh. I can't handle all the stuff that's yeah. coming in and I want to share it. So I normally am sharing it with the people around me, but I'm like, let's share it with our people here. So um, it's just good to know there's a place to do this. So Liz Perfectly is my new favorite place ever. <laughs> um, thank you so much for what you do. I wish you so much good health and um, you have a really pure heart, I can tell. So I, I, I know everything's going to be amazing for you. Thank you, Maria. So happy to be here. Thank you for your time. First of all, Clara is amazing. She's so sweet. Second of all, her company. I, know. I was like, I don't want to make this like advertisery. So I was like, but damn, but List Perfectly is like I my know. new favorite thing. And I'm going to go look it up as soon as I'm done because I too. actually didn't see it in, in ahead of time because I purposely didn't want to make this any kind of ad. Mm-hmm. But now I want it to be an ad for her because she's amazing and I love what she's doing. And I think it's going to be really helpful. So if you're watching this or listening to this, hit us up um, in the comments below on YouTube. Let us know what's broken that you're inspired to now go sell on List Perfectly. Truly. And then if you're listening in Apple... Um, on Apple Podcasts right now, what's the best way for them to send us a comment and tell us what they're going to do now because you of this episode? You guys can, well, you can leave a review. We would love that. Or you can comment on our Instagram. Um, or if you're a Patreon member, you can come on Patreon. Okay, yes. Friends, I am so inspired by that. Me too. Our next uh, guest for our Earth Day Sustainability episode. Thanks to Kelsey for programming. You get an A plus for this one. Thank you. Let's see how this next one goes. I'm (laughs) kidding. Uh, Lindsay McCormick of Byte. So Lindsay, let me find her intro here. She's the founder and CEO of Byte, a plastic free personal care brand making the world better. Uh, They're carbon free or carbon neutral, cruelty free. We're going to learn all about now. So we did fashion. Now we're going to learn a little bit about how the beauty industry contributes to the ailing planet. Oh yeah. Um, And our bodies. (laughs) And our bodies. Oh my God. Wait till you hear this stuff. This is so inspiring. I really love this. Okay. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we will be here with Lindsay. So we kind of just learned the the issues in in fashion and and fast fashion and how challenging that is. Tell us a little bit about the impact uh, the beauty industry is having on the earth in terms of plastics. Kelsey was telling me some really scary things. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's gigantic. If you think about your, you're using these things, whether they're personal care items or beauty items every single day. So you're going through all these pack, like packaging, whether it's the actual packaging it comes in, and then also the actual piece that the makeup is in. And so it's, we're ending up with a gigantic amount of waste, right? So we, we concentrated first on toothpaste tablets. So I was traveling all the time for work and I was going through those little toothpaste tubes. And when I found out about the massive amount of toothpaste tubes that are thrown out, that's just one item that we use every day, right? Um, It's 50 Empire State Buildings worth of plastic that get to landfills every single year. Wait, just slow down. What's 50 Empire State Buildings? Toothpaste tubes. 50 Empire State Buildings worth of toothpaste tubes end up in our landfills and our oceans every single year. Wait, every year? Yeah, every year. 50 Empire State Buildings filled with toothpaste tubes Mm -hmm. a year. I thought you meant like... Mm -hmm. Well, wow. Yeah, I could never imagine that in a year. Just in our country? Yeah, that's the US. Oh my like, God. And so when you think about these things, that's <laughs> one item. That's just a toothpaste tube. So what about the sunscreen tubes? And what about the, like everything else that we use, right? Like all of these little tiny things that you're just, it's a little bit here, a little bit there. When you add it up with just our you know, gigantic population of the world, it's 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 a massive problem. Wait, you know? so and just so. by the pool this weekend, we used two of those sunscreen bottles, the spray sunscreen bottles, toss it in the trash. Mm-hmm. Two, yeah. just me and my best friend. Mm-hmm. I know. So and what do we the, do? The How do we do that? that? What do we do with the sunscreen situation? It's hard. And it's like, it's a really tough, like multifaceted problem, right? But there's things that you can do. And like what we recommend is looking at, you know, what are the high frequency items that you're using every single day and what can you swap out, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's like the idea that we all really can make a difference. Um, so 
whether it's swapping out, maybe you find like a mineral sunscreen that comes in an aluminum tin that you can recycle. Maybe that's what you do, right? But if you really like the sunscreen that you're using, then maybe switch out your toothpaste, right? Like maybe that's something that you can use and then have ours. So I didn't really kind of, I can get into like what that product is, but it's like, it's all about finding these easy kind of wins that you can do that you can Mm -hmm. fold into your daily routine that really start to add up and make a difference. And so, yeah, it's, it's, but it's pretty, you know, it can get very overwhelming. I don't know if you were reading, there are some studies that just came out. Um, They found microplastics in the human bloodstream for the first time. So of 80% of the people tested had microplastics in their bloodstream. So it's not, so when we talk about the because they're microplastics. So they're super, super tiny. They're getting into our airways. You can breathe them in. They're in our airways. Jeez. They're in our bodies. And so it's not something where it's, oh, it's just ending up in the ocean or if it's, oh, it's just ending up in a landfill. Like they're ending up in us. Right. And so I think it's one of those things that it's really easy to feel entirely overwhelmed. Like what can one person do? Right. But there actually is a lot that one person can do. And it's our, it's, it's the, you know, kind of accumulation of all of those things that really start making a really big difference. Wait, so are we going to be bionic women I think made so. of plastic like are we want to <laughs> closer to being iron man oh my god <laughs> could this actually be a good thing like are we gonna <laughs> be a positive thing <laughs> Lindsay. I very much not. I do think it's, there's going to, you know, you see those uh, commercials of being like, you know, uh, were you exposed to like mesothelioma or yeah. something like that? I feel like, you know, in 10 years, they're going to be like, did you drink water, like, you know, plastic water bottles that were left in the car? Like, Oof. you know, we might have like yeah. a class action for you. Wait, you know, that's it's probably be- where it could come from, right? Because mm-hmm. the the heat's melting. I never drink them in the, in the car. Um, I don't really use water bottles anymore anyway, because we're really good with our hydro flasks and our whatevers. But, um, but my husband's not good at that. And it's like, and it's sitting there melting and I'm like, you are going to grow another like boob or something, (laughs) like something bad's going to happen. But so is it because we're burning these things that they're ending up in the air? You think? No. I mean, so when it comes to those types, yes, that could be one of it, but more it's when it comes, when it comes to microplastics in general. So what happens is they end up in our waterways and then they're so small when it evaporates into clouds, they can get taken up and then come back down. Right. So that's what they're, that's what scientists are finding right now. And so it's one of those things that like plastic has been around, like not even for a hundred years. Right. So we're all like figuring this out as it's happening. Right. Like, I don't think they, there's no way that when plastics were created, it, they were like, oh, this is eventually going to be such a convenient and helpful thing, right? Being able to make everything out of plastic, it really changed the game for a lot of, you know, grocery shopping is way easier. Like all these things are way easier, but then thinking of the long-term consequences of being like, oh, wait, no, it's going to break down into microplastics that never go away, that end up in our water and our bloodstream and our, you know, air. It's definitely, there's some unintended consequences that I think that we're going to be, you know, our generation and after, after our generation, we'll have to figure out how do we work with this? Like what's, how do we, how do we, how do we, yeah, work with this essentially? Oh, yeah. and well, and it's it like work. retraining us because I know my friend Susie Batiste sent mm-hmm. me, is it Supernatural, her new brand? Oh, I don't like know. cleaning products. I have it. Is I have it, it right now. You know? I, I literally use that I have it under my sink right now. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, it's but amazing. it's like, I'm like, uh, just give me the Windex. I don't know how to use this. This is so confusing <laughs> because it's, it's that part of us that we have to retrain, but Mm -hmm. it's not hard. If you just give yourself five minutes, I'm horrible with instructions though. So (laughs) you can be getting things to just refill your existing spray bottles and not have to keep buying new spray bottles. And also it's clean and it's healthy for you rather than the chemicals that are in this other stuff. And we're wondering why we all have all these diseases and these ailments. Well, we're inhaling so many chemicals all day long. So, um, Supernatural is a really great brand. Um, and, and I, I think that's something that's worthy for us and a really great swap, right? It's just sit down, make it your new system. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's so the way supernatural works is, oh God, it smells so amazing, by the way. I'm obsessed with how it smells, but you just open up the little concentrate, you put, pour it in, oh. and then you do water from your tap up to the, so once you get past that, and then it's, it's, it can be a subscription. So they just send you your new little, um, Brilliant. you know, concentrate each time. And the bottles are gorgeous. The design of this company mm-hmm. is so gorgeous. That's actually something that I, you know, so when I was developing bite, so I kind of to back up, it was in 2017, I was traveling all the time for work. 
and I was going through little toothpaste tubes. And that's when I found out billion toothpaste tubes all about, and also all of the harsh chemicals, artificial flavors, preservatives. And I was like, I want to make something better, right? Like there needs to be something else that can be, um, you know, can clean your teeth, but not have all these negative consequences. And so but you already had, had a job. Was, what were you doing? I, I did. I was a TV producer on the show House Hunters oh, and nice. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. We have some mutual, we know, we have, we know mutual people. No way. So <gasps> like, yeah. So you had a job that you loved and then you yeah. somehow got inspired by your toothpaste. <laughs> yeah, I know. Super random. Well, it was driving me crazy because that's the I thing like, I could, I could like, you know, refill my uh, shampoo and conditioner. Like I knew not to use the little ones at the hotels. Right. So I could like refill it with my big stuff at home. But then when it came to the toothpaste, I mean, I was throwing it out every other shoot. And I was like, this is like, if you look at like a little travel toothpaste tube, it's a substantial piece of plastic, you know? And I was just like, this is starting to feel kind of wasteful. And that was the first time that it triggered in my head being like, Oh, wait, like was, I'm creating all of this waste doing this, you know, like, well, I just want to find something that's convenient that I can just use. Right. And so I started looking at powders. Um, I started using tooth powders. They were a disaster. And so then I started looking into other toothpaste tablets and they either came packaged in plastic or they had a bunch of really gross ingredients. And so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to like talk to dentists, dental hygienists. I mean, I took online chemistry classes and I was like, I'm just going to make these myself like <laughs> for myself. Yeah. Wow. And I figured it would be like me and like some of my hippie friends and then like some, you know, uh, house hunter producers who are also traveling all the time. Who'd be like, what a solve, you know, like we can just throw this in our bag and not have to think about it. But where yeah, do you put I, it? Do you put it in your plastic baggie? No. So it's like this, it's a little glass. So this is it. It's a little glass bottle and it's an aluminum lid. Mm. And then it's just like tablets. And Lindsay so, too, because glass and aluminum can actually be recycled, right? Yeah. Infinitely recycled. So, cool. so aluminum is like the most highly recycled uh, material. And then glass can be infinitely recycled as well, or like upcycled and reused, right? But the so, idea is that, yeah. And then you just keep refilling this. So then so the sunscreen I used was aluminum. Oh. Because it's a spray it's bottle. Uh, but I don't know if you can recycle that. Oh my God. It's crazy. It's so okay. hard. So, so you have to be able to wash it out. Like, I, I don't uh, know how. I don't yeah, know you how can't with a top out. like that. Yeah. Okay. Which is actually, so one of the things, so since we made our toothpaste tablets, we ended up having a video go viral that like really launched the company. And since then we now have an entirely plastic free oral care line. So we have toothpaste oh. tablets, mouthwash tablets, whitening gel, all plastic free, uh, bamboo toothbrush. But one of the things really that recently that was driving me crazy, kind of speaking of these random things you can't recycle is um, I had switched to lotion that was in like a glass bottle so I could recycle it, but you can't recycle the pump. And like, it's a mixed material. You can't even like clean it out and take it apart and try to recycle it. Like you just can't. And so I started looking into it and there's actually like, again, a ginormous waste problem with these stupid pumps that are in everything. If you start looking now that I've said pump, you're going to like look wow. at all the pumps that you're like, wait, what? And so our newest product that we actually just launched is our body bomb, which I'm like pretty obsessed with. We need to send it to you. So it comes in, this is like a cardboard refill. So you can compost it in your house, but we have this like case, right. That's like super gorgeous. And it just goes in there. And so because there's no water in it, um, this is actually the same size as five eight ounce, um, b bottles of lotion wow. because there's Whoa. water and so you can reuse that and replace yeah. the inside. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you just keep replacing it. Brilliant. And it's, it has like hyaluronic acid, vegan squalene, like all of the good, we wanted to use like the super really good stuff, vitamin E, rose hip oil, the whole thing. And so you just like, like that. And then like, that's it. So you can put it like all over your, and it just like sits in your purse. I have one that is not this pretty anymore. Like it's nice and like trashed up because it just sits in my purse and gets scratched. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, it's just, but those are the types of things where it's like, for me, it's just like, there's a problem, right? Like these pumps, we can't figure, we can't recycle them. Like, what can we do that's better, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, what can we make that, and it needs to be beautiful, right? Because it doesn't, I feel like a lot of times these eco-friendly solutions end up feeling very crunchy or like too much of a like sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that just because you care about the planet doesn't mean you don't care about like the efficacy of these products or like what they look like, you know, yeah. you want to, you want to be able to have it all. So. I wonder like why big brands haven't gone to like reusable deodorant, right? So the case, the case is reusable because if you're able to do that there, Mm -hmm. This should... is deodorant. We did it too. Okay. Well, there you go. 
But, but the big brands haven't. Well, and they well, like, okay, so they have, but it never it baffles me, you know, because it's like the, the way that there are reusable deodorants now, um, but they're made with like a big plastic case. And then the cases are actually rather, they're, they're pretty fragile. Right. And so they start breaking that. Like I have one, like you spin and you spin and you spin and you spin and it doesn't go up, you know, and you're like, wait, but this is like the most simple thing in the entire world. We actually patented it because we were like, I can't believe someone hasn't done this yet, but it's like literally just going like that. And then you push it up from the bottom. Like that's huh. it. And this is the same size as a normal um, plastic deodorant. We just took out all of the wasted space. How did you come up with the idea to do it like that? You just thought of it? Just thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I use these products every day, you know? And like, so I was using these, like I was I using the one that was in, um, yeah, like a cardboard thing. I don't know if you've seen that, like they're you target they're everywhere, the cardboard one, mm-hmm. and you can get like one finger up it. And like, you have to like, and it's just like ridiculous. And, it, and I was just like, this sucks. And I was like, I want to be able to put like more fingers up so I can actually hold it, you know? And I was like, okay, so it needs to then be shaped like this. And so smart. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I love that. Well, here's the thing now. So now <laughs> you've built this, people are going to come and then Procter and Gamble is going to come say, buy you. Maybe they buy you to shelf you so that they can keep doing their thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is why every person matters so much, right? Because it's like, they would never, like that would be crazy because consumers are demanding change, right? Yeah. Like my business exists. Like I didn't raise any venture capital or whatever. Like we're, we say we're customer funded. So like when customers buy from us, which is just like a regular business, right? But you have to say that now because everybody's venture back, but it's like customers buy from us. And then we use that money to innovate and run our business. But I, the only reason we exist is because so many people believe in this and want these types of changes that yeah. we're able to make, you know, these types of products. And so I think that the big brands are starting to realize, like, first of all, that they can't just do lip service. They can't just be like, yeah, we've made some changes. Like people are digging in, yeah. like really being like, but what are they? And like really exposing them on social media and things like that. But I think they're also realizing like, this is a fundamental shift in consumer behavior Mm -hmm. and that people are, they are willing to support smaller brands. They're willing to pay a little bit more. They are willing to benefit the planet, right? It's not a direct benefit. Like I think ours are better than what's on the market. So it's also better for you um, in terms of, in terms of ingredients, but they're really paying a premium because they believe in, in trying to save the planet. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, I think that big brands um, are realizing that's not going to go away. Is the deodorant, going to work as well as my secret. Just asking. <laughs> is your secret a deodorant or antiperspirant? Uh, deodorant? Does it have deodorant. aluminum in it? I don't know. It's yeah, white. Yes. Okay. Definitely. It probably has aluminum in it. So ours is a deodorant, not an antiperspirant. So we didn't, so basically the way aluminum works is it uh, clogs your sweat pores. So you oh. can't sweat. So we don't, we don't do that. Instead, we let it like all natural deodorants, like native Schmitz, right. us as well. Um, Aesop, you still can sweat. So you still will sweat, but it won't smell. Which is probably so a can, good thing for your body to let that out. Right. Yeah. It is. yeah I know. It's, like, it's up to you. You, know, you can use whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not a big sweater it, anyway. So I go. think yeah. I could do this, but I don't want to smell. That's always my yeah. issue. That's the thing I like, I have to work and I'm sure in television, mm-hmm. you work near people. I have yeah. someone who works intimately and they stink and it's, no. and it's like a wide area yeah, of it's stink. Not it's not even like you have to be up close and personal. I can smell this person a couple hundred feet away. It's bad. I know I have a powerful She's nose She's not too. talking about me. Thank you. Not you. <laughs> but I'm like, oh my God, like you have to also take right. into consideration the people around you. <laughs> Right. And the efficacy of the products, 100%. Yes. No, ours, ours absolutely does work. I will say I go to, I go to Pilates here in Marina Del Rey uh, three times a week. And I will like, literally, I will see sweat like dripping down my armpit, you know, and I'll be like, but it doesn't smell. I'm nice. like, is, you know? I'm like, I'm good. It doesn't smell. Wow. So there we use something called zinc resiliate, which is basically it works by like, uh, this is actually really weird, but odors are like strings, like bonds. Right. And so what it does is it breaks it, it breaks the bond. So it basically oh. breaks the odor and you don't think. And this is what you learned in your chemistry. This is what you learned in your chemistry class. I was thinking that too. <laughs> How long did you have to go to school to learn this? I went on Reddit and I learned it like, through a thread. Like basically, literally, I went on Reddit and there was a thread saying, if you want to learn chemistry from senior year of high school to PhD in organic chemistry, here's how you can take the classes for free. And so I just started going on and I took all these different classes. Wow. Um, 
after, yeah, like on planes, like while I was like flying places for house hunters, I would just sit there and be like, well, I have, you know, five hours across the country. I'm just going to sit and watch these lectures. And That's someone yeah. who's maximizing their time, queen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> learn Truly. from Lindsay. Truly. I watch people waste their time all the time. I'm like, you could learn a language in this time. You could, like, there are people who work in like mundane jobs where they just have to sit somewhere and just wait till someone shows up. Like whether you're in like, it, whatever, just sitting at a desk and you're the receptionist and it's only intake you have to deal with. Like you could be doing so much in your time, Mm -hmm. right? Like anytime I had free time on set, I was doing something productive in between. Not that you should fill every second of your day because I do feel like you need your clear space too. But, you know, when you want to get ahead, this is how you do it. You find those moments where you have free time to, to get to the next level. And look, now you have your own company. You don't work at house centers anymore, right? I do not. I do not. So yeah, I've been, we've been, I've been full-time on bite since 2018 and now we're a team of 12. Wow. So, so cool. Yeah. Is everything made here in California? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. We're all, well, our like deodorants made in like New Jersey, like things are different, but our to- toothpaste, mouthwash, everything, California. Wow. So, so yeah. okay. What are some of the crazy things? Like, like Kelsey told me by 2050, there'll be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Yeah. Is that really true? So these are, those statistics are very helpful, right? Cause they're able to take an abstract concept and break it into something that you understand, right? There is, there's an insane amount of plastic in the ocean. And there's also a lot of things that's happening in the ocean that's killing off species, right? There's, um, it's acidification, like it's becoming more acidic, like different things, different things are happening due to climate change and due to plastic pollution where those, those types of things are absolutely they are true, but it's hard to say because in 2050, are we going to look around like and count all the plastic in the fish, right? But what is helpful is that it shows the need for immediate action, mm-hmm. right? And so I think when I like to rely on facts, um, we, uh, I mean, we talk about the plastic in the ocean because um, that is true, but like being able to see like right now there's, pl- there's um, microplastics in our bloodstream and the air, it's like, that's like now, you know what I'm saying? And like, yes, in, in 2050, there will be more plastic than fish, which is crazy. It also has to do with fishing nets though. That's like one of the major con- uh, contributors to ocean plastic. Getting left behind. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. Okay. And that, that's like, if you think about plastic, it's, it's interesting because it's, it's kind of like a knife, like it's a tool, right? So it can be this really helpful, great thing, you know, that has really done a lot of good stuff. Like when you look at plastic in the medical industry and like what we were able to do with like, you know, modern science, like all of so many things we were able to do because of plastic, but then it's like, we kind of went overboard into like the, everything needs to be so convenient and cheap. And Mm -hmm. that's the problem. Plastic is like, this is actually shocking. um, And this is a future looking fact, but it's terrifying to me at least, is that like the global petroleum industry is like not scared about decline in oil use in terms of transpo. So like um, cars or boats or anything, they're not worried about that. Like even with solar coming because they know there's going to be so much oil demand for the plastic industry that they are going to be fine. Wow. And so you're like, no. So like now the plastic injuries industry, they are looking at being like one of the major pulls for oil. So they don't, they're not even concerned anymore about like, you know, um, solar coming in and kind of taking part of the transpo industry for petroleum. So like, that's wow. so messed up when well, you actually think about And that's because like, one of the other statistics here is 7.9 billion units of rigid plastic were created just for beauty in 2018 alone. 7.9 billion. And that's for beauty and personal care products. And that's going to grow to 560.5 billion in the next eight years. No, 18 years, 2022, 2030. No, eight years. years. Eight years. So that's, hold on, 7.9 to 560. That's what, like another 80 times? (laughs) Right. I was like, yeah. And we're supposed to be stopping this. That's the thing. No no wonder, because I was trying to think of what is, what is the petroleum industry counting on? If it's only 7.9, how is it going to be much more than that to sustain the loss in the energy that they're getting with Teslas and electric vehicles and solar? Oh, well, don't worry. We're going to have 80 (laughs) times more plastic for the beauty industry. But how is that, how, how is that even possible when there's so many Lindsay McCormick's and Susie Batista's out there who are like, no, F you, we're going to create this amazing, sustainable stuff. And 
and we're going to, we're going to beat this. I'm kind of disenchanted. Now. <laughs> well, and that's, I hope that we can change it. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's why when people talk about the big brands copying, they're like, Oh, cause we had, um, one of the major players, were, um, came out with a toothpaste tablet and literally called them bite-sized toothpaste bits, like in their Amazon thing. And I was like, what? I was like, you were like a bajillion dollar company. What? Um, oh no, that happens like, to us, by the way. Everyone took better together. <laughs> Sephora says, let's beauty together. Starbucks, Starbucks is, we're better together. Everybody's taking better together. And I'm like, oh, so I guess I'm flattered. <laughs> Keep advertising <laughs> yeah, exactly. my show for me everywhere. <laughs> That's exactly. You're like, it's a, it's a, it's a positive thing, right? Like hopefully we're all better together, but yeah, I feel, but for, for us, it's like, it's so funny. I'm sorry that you're dealing with that. <laughs> um, but it's like, it's like, we need the big players to get in the game. We need everyone to get in the game because it's like, that's really what's going to change the world, right? It's not going to yeah. be these niche, you know, companies like, for like myself and Susie's, which we, I feel like our, our, um, our place is to be like the trailblazer to show here's the market. People want this. Like, you know, we, I'm sure I don't know much about her business, but I'm sure she does everything the way I do, where it's just like, we just do it right. You know, like I don't, I don't take shortcuts. I like, we do sustainability all throughout the supply chain. We're in the process of getting our B Corp, but it's like, I know not everybody can, because also it, 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 that then becomes a more expensive product. You know what I'm saying? And so it is something where our stuff is, you know, it's accessible for, for many people, but if you're, if you have a big family or if, you know, you're on a very tight budget, um, it would be a compromise trying to buy something that, you know, is a little bit more expensive than what you're used to. Um, but unfortunately that's what these things cost, right? When you're dealing with a glass or an aluminum over a plastic and over bad ingredients, that's just the way it is. But I do think that it's the bigger brands that are going to get in the space Mm -hmm. that start just, if they do it, you know, 80%, right but still way better than doing what they're doing, that's when we're going to actually be able to have change, right? So maybe that's when we're going to be able to start chipping away at that statistic, um, you know, when it comes to beauty, you know, just ADXing the amount of plastic bananas. Oh my God. That was some quick math. Where's it all going to go? Like, where's it all going to go? Well, there's a really great quote. There's no such thing as a way. When we throw anything away, it must go somewhere. And that's from mm-hmm. Annie Leonard, who is a proponent of sustainability. Thank you, Annie. Um, friends who are watching this on YouTube right now, comment below and let us know what you think was the most kind of shocking statistic mm-hmm. and what action you may take moving forward. Because it is small steps. Like even if you commit to one thing today, you're going to make a huge difference. I mean, 50 Empire State Buildings a, a, year, a year in toothpaste. So even if you help contribute to one floor of that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Some anything, it all matters. You know, yeah. it all really matters. And those are so. two two companies that I know um between yours bite. It was so funny because I told Kelsey, I'm like, I don't want this to be about advertising. I want this to just be yeah. like a real just Earth Day. I'm thing. like, I promise they're amazing. But now I'm like obsessed with <laughs> everything. Know. So yeah. So when you support a company like Bite or Supernatural, Susie Batiste, who also created Poopery. Mm-hmm. Um, is amazing and so, so, you know, committed to this. I think um, even if you picked one to do, it would be your contribution to the world. The other thing too for sustainability that's great is um, I remember interviewing Alicia Silverstone. She wrote this like vegan book a long time ago and she's like, you can be um, an aspiring vegetarian. And I said, well, what's that? She's like, just cut down your meat. The amount of meat um, you eat is is what's also really hurtful. And I don't remember all the statistics, but massive, she's like, yeah. take it down to once a week or, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever it is, just reduce that. Um, and that would, you know, be really helpful. Every little thing, every yeah. little thing helps. Well, think the other thing I think about is we all drink almond milk now and almonds yep. take so much water to make. So it was bad enough we were eating almonds, I guess at one point. Now we're all doing almond milk. That's not good, right? And almond flour. You probably I mean, know all still, about that. It's still less, it's way less water than cow's milk or animal milk, is but it? it's more than, yeah. Oh, it's almond is like, if you look at a graph of like cow's milk to almond milk, it's still like cow's milk is way more, but just almond is way more than soy or oat. Mm. The least, the, the easiest on the planet is oat. If okay. anybody's wondering. Wow. <laughs> if anyone's wondering. But <laughs> higher yeah. in sugar. Who's just happy about that? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. Higher in sugar. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, and then soy is like kind of, it's wow. like in between. Lindsay, can I ask you one more thing, which oh. you and I talked about this a little bit, and I thought it was insane about how much of our toothpaste we ingest every oh, yeah. time we're using it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's something that I learned like throughout this process, which was back, mind blowing to me. So the average person swallows five to 7% of their toothpaste every time they brush their teeth. And you're like, okay, wow. well, what does that actually equate to? So because you brush your teeth twice a day, that is an entire blob of toothpaste every seven days. So if you, when you're like looking at the back of what's in your toothpaste tube would not like literally like put it on your toothbrush and then eat it, you should oh, consider I know, right? not using that because you are, you're swallowing it. As you brush your teeth, you're just naturally swallowing. Wow. Yeah. Five to 7% is going down the back of your throat and you are ingesting it. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's when we, like for us, we just use everything, clean ingredients, wanting to make sure that it's something that you, you can absolutely eat, you know, or that, I mean, we don't suggest eating it, but like you are ingesting it, you know? So question. that was something that was shocking. Yeah. Question. So if you're using one of the top tier brands, what could be the worst things we're swallowing? Just so we know for our education purposes. Good question. Well, that's a great question. So it was, it was actually really interesting. They were putting micro, they were putting plastics in the toothpaste um, up until I believe 2016, <laughs> those little uh, balls that were there for like the whitening benefits oh, or whatever yeah. were actual plastic. <gasps> and a dental hygienist started finding them in people's gums. Oh my God. And she wrote to the company saying like, Hey, these are causing these like gum, you know, whatever. They were like, no, 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 it's fine. There's like this big, you can like this big blog, um, like expose on it. And they were like, no, it's fine. It's totally fine. And then she kind of kept on going back and forth, back and forth. And then finally it came out that, yeah, they are harmful. It is plastic and it's getting stuck in people's gums. So like, that's the type of thing where it's like, why was that even used in toothpaste oh to begin with? I right. So, but I would say the, it, the one that's a really common one is sodium lauryl sulfite and everyone like, you know, hates on sodium lauryl sulfate, but for a variety of different reasons, it doesn't really matter what you think about whether it's okay for topical use or not. It's um, one of the main um, ingredients that causes cold sores or canker sores. Mm. So if you're someone who is uh, subjectable to it's like uh or, uh, if you get those, you could be getting it from your toothpaste. Um, and it also, there's something that it can cause like, and I, when I say this, like probably someone in your audience to be like, Oh my God, I can't believe like that was it. Um, it's called slothing. It's, um, when the, your cheeks inside your mouth are like peeling. Uh, yes. That's you, me all the time. Uh, you're allergic to your toothpaste. What? <gasps> yeah, you got to stop using that toothpaste. Oh my God. <laughs> we're, we're like someone in our audience, actually, Maria. Oh no, my, yeah, my girls are always, but when I oh had like gosh. a lot of anxiety before I did my Joe Dispenza meditations, I would chew on them all the time. Wow. So I'm allergic to my toothpaste? Yeah, you're allergic. Like it's all the harsh, it's all the crap that's in there. There's well, it's, so, called, it's, an, oh, it's supposed <laughs> to be for sensitive teeth. <laughs> apparently I mean, it's not for sensitive, sensitive cheeks teeth, but. <laughs> wow okay well i am officially switching over to bite done <laughs> um i am so glad that i just learned that holy moly who would have known you're gonna feel no. so much better like seriously you're gonna be like you're gonna be like it's gonna feel so much better wow okay here's the thing <laughs> we have to wrap this episode up but i want you in studio at some point yes. from the entrepreneurial side because i'm so fascinated about your business model, because I think that's kind of the model of the future. You know, there's Mm -hmm. so many people who get so, you know, uh, there's an allure to having like money come in and investors. I don't want any investor money. I want to just do things myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious to learn more about it. So hopefully we can have you on and you can share with all of us so we can all be better together. Yes. I love it. And you're right down the street, basically. I love that. I know. I'm very close. Yeah, I love that. I'm the, I'm a huge proponent of not raising. I like, I feel like there needs to be more entrepreneurs who say that because everybody, like when I asked, when I first started Bite and we were going crazy viral, we have, you know, all this investor interest, we still get a a ton of it. And you ask people and they're like, take as much money as you can, you know, as fast as you can. Like, that's what you need to do or whatever. Yeah, because they think you're going to fail. (laughs) Yeah. And I was just like, I don't know if I want to do that. Like, I just want to build build a sustainable business. <laughs> you know, I want to have like something that, that works and that I can, you know, that has solid foundations. And I just didn't want to flip the balance sheet upside down and have a bunch of cooks in the kitchen. And I really wanted to do it the way that I wanted to do it. And it really worked out. And I'm, I don't think it can be the same for everybody, but I definitely think if, if your business is also your passion um, and you're not like just making this to like make a quick buck and try to flip it. In which case, if it goes down, you're like, well, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you really do love what you're doing and you want to make it work, I just think that, um, you know, there's, you could do a a small friends and family round or something like that. But as soon as you get something like venture capital or anything like that, it just changes the game. And it's, it is the right move for many people, but it's also, 
it's also not the right move for just as many. Yeah. I think. So cool. Well, Lindsay, I am so excited I got to meet you yeah. and thank you for all the incredibly educational tips. I am so grateful for my <laughs> my diagnosis. Truly. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and like I said, we'll have to have you back soon. Let's, um, we're, by the way, for everyone who's listening, we're going to put all of Carla and Lindsay's information in the summary of this episode, Instagrams, websites, all of that. Um, Lindsay, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Maria. This was so fun. A plus plus for Earth Day. You guys can tell us how you feel about our Earth Day episode, but I am pretty impressed. I learned a ton. Right. And I am so excited to switch over my toothpaste. I know. And, um, wow. I know. Guys, we really are really, really. It's scary. Screwing this place up a bit. It's scary. I know. And well, it's the one thing too, I really like, um, about both of them, but Clara too, and the, the second hand clothing, I would always say, you know, Oh, I'm buying fast fashion or going to Zara or this or that, because that's all I can afford. But really, go on these places like a List Perfectly or a Poshmark. Or this. You can afford that, and you can afford yeah. the secondhand. So anyways, I like both of their messages just about it's the small things yeah. that we do that make a difference, right? It's yeah. like you don't need to go in and swap your entire beauty dealio, but swap your toothpaste. Swap your deodorant, like yeah. little things. So I'm excited, too. I'm going to swap my toothpaste and yeah. my deodorant, actually. Yeah, I am just so blown away. Yeah, Those right? statistics are wild. And I think that both Scary. both ladies are so impressive with what they're doing. So if you liked this episode, let us know below. Happy Earth Day, friends. Remember, be nice people, make good choices, and be present. <laughs>